Why hello there, Obsidian Madman here, and today I'll be ranking all the Cuphead bosses from easiest to hardest. I'll be judging them on how hard it is to achieve an S rank, which means amateur hour is over, my dudes. We're taking this baby up the gullet on expert mode. Quick note, don't complain that the footage isn't of a perfect run. It's hard enough to achieve an S rank on its own, but if I were to record until I got it, I'd need 8 terabytes of storage, which I just don't have. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump in. Number 19, Goopy the Grande. The only reason this is the lowest is because I can consistently one-shot this bad boy, whereas the root pack takes me 3 or 4 attempts before I can get that sweet, succulent S rank. Remember that you can duck when he launches his face at you and dash out of the way of his less than stellar ups. Phase 2, he becomes larger but the strategy remains unchanged, duck the fist and keep dashing. Don't forget to parry those question marks so you're getting a solid 10 points off your grade. Final phase, aim up for the entire time and blast his face with spread shot EX attacks. They hurt. When he tries to crush, you simply dash out of the way and you're good to go. Easy fight, easy S. Number 18, The Root Pack. Mo, Larry, and Curly make up the tutorial boss and they function well for literally nothing else. I'd recommend getting your three parries on the potato because parrying the tears of the less than memorable onion are significantly harder. Other than that, simply hold down the fire button and they'll be dead before you know it. To take on the carrot, make sure you're using spread shot and pummel his face with EX attacks. The mini carrots will be no problem and the bean is easily dashable. If you have a grudge against garden foods, you will find this fight quite enjoyable. Number 17, Cagney Carnation. When I go to prom in May, I will be sure to do Cagney's idol dance. It is undeniably the GOAT. Unfortunately, you won't see it much as he's a big fan of seed spewing. Roundabout is great for clearing the seedlings and will play an important role in general projectile clearing in the future. Try to parry the pink seeds, because phase 3 will likely not give you the parries you need. This phase is like being attacked by an emu. When in doubt, stay calm and smack it in the face with a boomerang. No need to go to war though. Phase 2 is easy, dodge the acorns by going back and dash into the front. Dodge his boomerang by literally jumping. Just be mindful of when Cagney is about to launch his face at you. Talk about nightmare fuel. Cagney will then go Super Saiyan and cover the ground with his thorns. Pay more attention to which platform is about to be covered than to the pink and white dandelions. Pair them if you have to and you are through the only easy fights in the game. Welcome to the first level of hell. Number 16, Ribby and Croaks. The biggest pose of this fight pose was how to parry and take out the flaming flies while still doing damage to our daunting dynamic duo. Well worry no more, you have roundabout. Jump up and down while shooting backwards to take out every fly and the shots that miss will smack the boxing brothers in the face. All you have to worry about now is parrying. The pink Hadoukens will be either 1 in 5, 3 in 5, or 2 in 4. Get all 3 in phase 1 because the phase 3 parries don't count toward the total. In phase 2, Croaks goes all environmental on you and turns into a wind turbine while Ruby belches out hurricane spheres. Use the wind to your advantage to quickly dodge backwards if you have to, then dash back up to the front. But be mindful of when funds are cut to the EPA as this can screw up your funky flow. Ribu may also throw Hadoukens at you, so be ready for that. In Phase 3, the brothers do what any rational pair would do in this situation, fuse into a slot machine, but don't unload too quick. Kribby is invincible until you pull the lever. The coins aren't terrible as long as you stay calm. After you parry the lever, Kribby will do one of three things. Frogs, tigers, and devils. One of these things is not like the other. I find tigers to be the easiest because you tend to face backwards, making roundabout ideal. Devils aren't bad because smoke dash. This phase is hard mostly because you get the least amount of practice, but put in some solid time and you'll be fine. Number 15, Sally Stage Play. You know what's funny about this boss? There's a girl in my choir who is literally this chick from Looks to Attitude. Sally is fast but manageable. Smoke dash is a big deal here, so if you want a challenge, turn that sucker off. Phase 1 has Sally trying to pile drive you to death and throwing fans that realistically should not hurt. She also might disappear and drop down on you, just dash out of the way of that one. The worst part of this and the next phase is accidentally dashing into a fan that is trying way too hard to upstage you. Other than that, parry her trifling attempts at intimacy and phase 1 will be a breeze. Phase 2 is harder only because you actually have to jump. She'll summon mouse car things that end up dropping down from the ceiling as well as keep her two main attacks from the previous phase. You know how in the credits of movies there's always a list of production babies? Well, they're all here and they're all angry that no one notices them. They drop bottles of milk down from the windows and are very easy to miss. Don't ignore them. This phase can be overwhelming, but if you don't get cornered and you're always aimed at our guest star, this phase will be quicker than you think. Phase 3 turns her into a set piece. If you don't have smoke dash, dodging the wave may be a puzzle, but regardless, breaking the meteor gives you an extra parry as well as allows you to jump over the wave. Dodge the lightning by literally not jumping. 
This phase is Cake, which is ironically not trying to kill you. To keep hitting our lovely psychotic angel in the final phase, hold down the up key with a ranged weapon and 50% of your shots will connect as long as you follow her location. Just watch out for the roses, parry one if you have to. Someone inquired Sally if it hurt when she fell from heaven. She responded by explaining how some dude with a big ego kicked her ass during the matinee. Closing night, am I right? Number 14, Werner Vermin. You'd think German Jerry would be a tougher battle, but alas, this fight is easier than the French military. Try to get at least two parries in phase one, even though three is ideal. You can parry two grapes in a row if they spawn next to each other, like so. To avoid the cherry bombs, you actually want to jump toward where they land to avoid the shots that shoot along the ground. When he does his Blitzkrieg attack, parry the springs and dash over him or just smoke dash through him. Vermin then makes a tactical error, putting himself in the middle of the war. Whether you're on the Russian side or the European side, it doesn't make a difference. Make sure you're never on the same level as him or your cup will melt faster than the Vicked Vich of the Vest. Certain bottle caps will be jutting out at you, but they're easy to avoid as long as you keep your cool. In phase 3, Tom comes in and swallows Vermin in one gulp. There's gotta be some obscure metaphor here. The cat doesn't suck. He flip flops his paw at you, causing debris to rain down. He also summons former mice that throw things at you. On Expert, they are sometimes pink and where your final parry comes from. Pummel his face with spread shot and EX attacks and this mechanical cat will kick the bucket. How do you like them apples? Number 13, The Devil. Under all the craziness, Satan is actually deceptively simpler than you might think. Phase 1 is difficult, but you get a hell of a lot of practice, so you'll cut it down eventually. There are three main attacks, Goat, Spider, and Snake. He will go goat most often, simply duck under his grimy hands. <coughs> Spider gave me a bit of trouble, mostly because of those minions. The snake attack also becomes more complicated due to those little devils. See what I did there? Please kill me. There was also a glitch that was fixed in the update where you could get hit for literally no reason, so I guess you won't feel the same pain I did when I S-ranked him. The various blue attacks are the really troublesome ones. I'm calling them 4s, 5s, and 6s due to the number of objects. There's no real trick to them, you just gotta not suck at dodging. I have the least amount of trouble with the 5s attack because it basically guarantees me a free parry. Once Lucifer is scared out of his skin, you get scared out of your skin with the second phase. This is ironically easier than phase 1 though. Switch to the spread shot because you can point blank him to death with EX attacks. The flaming remnants of King Dice's second minion are the most infuriating part of these next three phases. I'd recommend always jumping to where the chip just landed because they will never repeat the same spot it just landed on. Have I mentioned that you can fall off? Do yourself a favor and don't. There are two attacks here, axe and bomb. Once the axe starts spinning, go to the center of the spiral to avoid getting slicered. Do your best to parry the bomb, but if you're not sure you can, get to the other side of the screen because the blast radius is bigger than hell itself. Next, our demonic demon in distress removes the outer two platforms and replaces them with fat ugly demons that can barely stay in the air. They spit out skulls that will hit you if the platform you're standing on is elevated. Beelzebub also summons devil bats that have less health than the French military. Whoops, sorry to use that one. The best thing you can do here is stay calm. Keep hitting those eyes and this phase will go by fast. The devil will then begin to cry, catalyzing the final phase in the game. There is a safe zone right between the poker chip that drops on the last remaining platform and the stream of parryable tears. It's very easy to miss because of how hectic the fight is. Again, keep your composure. Once you find it, the final phase becomes a breeze and holy hell, you just s rank the devil. Number 12, Rumor Honeybottoms. Ooh, controversy. Due to a trick that will blow your mind, I found Rumor to not suck so bad. In this fight, the Discount Honey Nut Cheerios mascot throws bombs that have 8 spikes rather than 6. This, however, helps you because getting your parries in the first phase is desired. Make sure you don't accidentally land on a platform when you try to parry, or else you just made a drill-sized hole in your antique self. Watch out for the bees that are certainly being paid less than minimum wage. Put them out of their misery if you like. Next phase has some bad attacks that are aren't so bad if you know what you're doing. The pyramid is the one to look out for because it spawns right on top of you with little warning. They shoot parryable drills out of the tips, which, unlike the pink spheres, will add to your parry total. Great trick for dodging the bullet bills. Keep yourself in the same column of platforms and jump up or drop down when you need to. It gives you less to deal with and makes it easy to predict where the bullet will go. Bullet Bills, the Honey Nut Cheerios mascot? Honey Bottoms is a freaking thief. Rumor proceeds to read a magic book, making her eyes all hypnotic, and then transforms into a plane that hovers at the bottom of the screen, making it quite hard to hit her. Ready to have your mind blown? Aim up with Roundabout or the Lobber. You can now consistently hit her without the risk of accidentally dropping down through a platform to your death. Boom. Never be directly over one of her turbines as these launch oversized fist bumps that will go around for another pass when they don't get the recognition they want. When she goes saw crazy, get into the lower corner opposite of the side that she leans toward. It's ironic really, I have a fear of bees and yet I don't seem to have too much trouble with her.
Number 11, King Dice. This fight would be harder if the dice wasn't so easy to control. The dice is loaded, more like the dice is the reason why all but the last phase is a pushover. My recommended fights are 3, 5, and 7. Fight 2 is also pretty easy but can screw you over if you get lazy. Avoid fight 6 at all costs. Horse racing is trash anyway. Fight 5 is tougher than all the others but as long as you can parry which you'd better know how to do, you'll be fine. My choice for fight 7 may raise some eyebrows until you remember that I use smoke dash for literally everything and with it this fight is easier than the root pack. Then you come to the die head himself. Saying he has an ace up his sleeve would be an understatement. Just like with fight 5, the hearts are the pink ones even though they can still damage you. The worst thing that always happens to me is trying to dash twice during your parry extravaganza and the game just won't let you. Try to pummel his face with EX attacks, which can also increase your airtime. The hardest part about this fight is its length. None of the fights are too hard, but if you make one mistake, which will happen often, back to the beginning you go. Number 10, Baroness Von Bonmon. Baroness is the owner of five foods, a jawbreaker with two minions that track its pattern, a waffle that explodes diagonally and not diagonally at different times, a candy corn with a figure eight tracking path, a gumball machine that is significantly harder on expert, and that damn cupcake. As you cosplay the nutrition Nazi, be on the lookout for parryable jelly beans. This fight is this high because you don't know which five minions you'll get. It's hard to get practice in because you can't control which one comes your way. After three less than nutrition, Trish's nightmares are down, Baroness herself will come charging at you with her giant gloppy candy castle that spits parryable boulders at you, all while she rips her head off and throws it at you. You know, the casual stuff. The head tracks you in a more delayed fashion than you might think, so try to react to its movement rather than be jumping all over the place like some 60 year old man who just won 20 bucks off the lottery. Sad. I believe that parrying the boulder will add to your total once. I'm also willing to bet that the devil is secretly a dentist that wants everything sweet and delicious eradicated, which is why he wants this contract. Number 9, Grim Matchstick. If you've ever dreamt of relaxing with a dragon while walking on clouds, then keep dreaming because this dragon don't play nice. The clouds are reversed when you jump up to expert for reasons that are unknown to me as this actually makes the fight easier. Matchstick has two main attacks, rings and fireballs. The rings are where all three of your parries will come from because nothing else in this fight is pink. Enjoy! The last ring in the set will always be parry material and you may have to go above screen to land on top of it. The fireball snake up and down all while that freaking tail tries to ram you into the stratosphere. You tend to face away from him in the first phase so roundabout works well. Matchstick then flies to the other side of the screen and unleashes an army of flaming munchkins. This section can be a nightmare for the jittery as the fire children jump to where you're going, not where you currently are. Don't be like some amateur underpaid NFL quarterback who makes instinctive decisions because he can't handle 12 sweaty men surrounding him. That's a great way to get toasted. Make your move only after the flame jumps. Switch to the lobber if you haven't already and it will be impossible to miss when you face backward. Now despite Matchstick showing us that he is in fact 3-1, I wouldn't go so far to call him our lord and savior. The head shoot fireballs that become faster, smaller fireballs if shot by your shots. Lobber is great here because it involves the least amount of shots for the most damage. One of the heads will also turn into a flamethrower that cuts the screen in half. Stay on top for this attack so you have the freedom to jump. Someone inquired Matchstick if it hurt when he fell from heaven. Matchstick said yes. Yes it did. Number 8, Captain Brinybeard. If you look up difficulty spike in the dictionary, Brinybeard will be listed as the first synonym. It begins simple enough, with the only difference from normal being that less of the pellets that the captain shoots are pink. I wouldn't worry too much about parrying in this fight, just do it when you can. Charge shot suits me in this fight because standing in one place will get you killed faster than a fish near a toxic waste facility. In phase 2, Poseidon's wrath manifests itself into the form of a metric crapload of projectiles that want you to pay a visit to Davy Jones' locker. The shark goes farther up on the dock than before and the squid has much more more health. The dogfish get me every time because I can never tell when the ship shoots its cannonball. The cannonball is responsible for about 80% of the hits I took in this fight. I'm not sure why it's been retired from Modern Warfare. That sucker packs a wallet. This is the closest you'll get to bullet hell without climbing into a plane. When the ship finally decides it has free will and that no Popeye reject will usurp its way onto its fine deck, you can take a breather because this phase is easier than the French- Oh, forget it! The uvula in this relationship deals all the damage, shooting spinning Mario Odyssey ship cores at you and firing a parryable, yes parryable, beam at you. If you choose to duck, put yourself in a position where the barrel won't crash down on you. If you parry, then enjoy the funnest part of the entire game. Come to think of it, this fight is one of the funnest in the game as long as you don't suck. Number 7, Beppy the Clown. My second favorite fight takes place after closing hours where everyone's favorite mascot can unleash his unadulterated rage. He starts in a bumper car where Smoke Dash eliminates the need to take out the ducks up top. One may be pink. When he knocks himself off his ride, the real fight begins. Beppy is now a balloon. Smaller balloons with teeth will fly toward you, making spread shot best for taking them out. 
The interesting part about this fight is I prefer not to use a super at all because of Spreadshot EX attacks. I'm convinced that five of those guys at point blank do more damage than a single milk blast. Three of them should do the trick here. When the train comes through, parry the nose and don't land on the clueless passengers or you get launched into the air like an idiot who thought taking off his seatbelt in the middle of the ride was a good idea. Once you burst a big balloon, Beppy rides atop a green or yellow donkey whose color indicates the type of attack it'll dish out. The green ass does a sine wave of horseshoes and the yellow ass puts his horseshoes at the top of the screen only to have them drop down on you. The train being ever present is what puts this fight so high up because you need to plan out when to go under the ass and when to take evasive maneuvers. Deal enough damage and Beppy falls off his ride only to become the ride in phase 4. Before the super fast train comes through to ruin your day, unload all of your cards. They should take it down to about half health. If you like trains, don't say it. Beppy the carousel then spits out penguin baseball players that shoot penguin baseballs at you. I wouldn't bother killing them, it'll do more harm than good when you should stay focused on Beppy himself. Switch to a ranged weapon when the penguin emerged. Put this right out of commission and then file a lawsuit if any part of your fine flagon was fiddled with. Number 6, Hilda Berg. The first aeroplane level on this list puts you up against a cosmic Betty Boop flying through the sky riding on a unicycle. Nothing too fancy. The worst part about this fight in general is getting a bad combination. You might be pulling off a tough maneuver through a green zeppelin shot and then all of a sudden Hilda Butt decides to laugh you to death. Her tornado and green spread shot, a sharknado if you will, cause me some pain as well, but you won't see that until you beat the first constellation. Speaking of constellations, Rock Ares has been retired due to expert mode, so you'll always face evil Gemios first and flame sat Sagittario second. Babel is my childhood, I couldn't resist. The twins will charge up a static death ball and then throw it up into the heavens chanting a static death chant. Line yourself up in the 9 o'clock position relative to the orb. The shots will begin from the top or bottom and rotate right spin or left spin. Being anywhere else is my personal favorite way to embrace doleful defeat. Also, the purple zeppelin you see in this phase will shoot a pink bullet. Sagittarius is what I call the clench your butthole section. The blue stars are much faster this time around and running from those while dodging a green shot literally stops time. There's a way to blow up the stars right out of the gate with bombs, but I can never get that to work. All I can say is make sure you have a super for this part. After the stamina type bites the dust, the zeppelin count doubles, but so will your parry count. If you see a green and purple one, count on a parry. Again, be mindful that this chick can combo you to pieces. If she whips up another tornado, either kill the green zeppi or pray to the stars. Oh wait. In the sixth phase, Hilda does an impression of the Avatar Season 1 finale that somehow still impresses me more than Shyamalan's version. Her nose is rivaled only by pearls. Pearl would tell you that herself, but there are things that are impossible. For her to explain, but she wants to. The stars flying at you travel directly horizontal even if they waver up and down. If you're missing a parry, look no farther than the pink dwarf. The red UFOs fire when you're directly under them, and the brown ones fire when you're directly before you're directly under them. Charge red, fake out brown. Pound her nose in with max supers and my third favorite fight is yours for the taking. Number 5, Jimmy the Great. Our rowdy Robin Williams reject really puts these final fights to the next level. Phase 1 on Expert is one of the hardest sections in the game. You'll get one of three attacks, cats, swords, or heirlooms. Gotta pronounce those consonants, buddy. On the scale of suck, they're all pretty much equal, though I prefer cats over the others. Jimmy also has a habit of launching his face at you in a way that somehow causes more discomfort than Von Bon Bon. The only trick here is get good. Phase 2 gives you a well-earned break where you can switch to bombs and blow the crap out of his face killing it multiple times. The bouncing blades would like to end up right where and when you emerge from a pillar, so don't hug the right side of the screen or you'll be hitting that restart button faster than you can throw your keyboard across the room. No harm in staying mini here either, because the hits don't actually damage the boss, as long as you get through you're golden. Phase 3 really puts the art in artistry. Jimmy, living in a sarcophagus containing the life, the universe, and everything, turns himself into a tongue that launches planets at you from his eye sockets, all while mummies come charging at you. Let me tell you, it's a blast. You can either stay high and rain down bombs or stay in his face knowing that the plants will go wide every second period. Either way, it's not the worst part of the fight. Jimmy then summons a voodoo Pinocchio to light you up with big bullets while his hat tracks you down to fill you up with small bullets. This phase takes a while. It takes me two supers and still sticks around longer than phase three. I recommend moving down a tad every time the puppet shoots unless the hat is in your way so you aren't jittering up and down the screen like a source filmmaker animation. Also keep in mind that the firestorm that's constantly coming out of the finger gun will hurt you. That firepower ended more runs than I'd like to admit. Parry any pink bullets so you have extra cards when you need them, which you will, because once the strings are cut, Jimmy comes out to face you and damn, he knows how to unleash a curse. The last phase involves three pyramids that shoot north, south, east, and west. Jimmy also fires a hard to see mines beam right before a pyramid activates. It can be a lot to take in, but plan your location so you don't get cornered between a beam and another beam. Knock his teeth out with a max super bomb and show him an anti-smoking ad to finish one of the longest fights in the game.
Number four, Dr. Carl's Robot. I don't know about you, but I enjoy the Iron Giant marginally less after playing this fight. Phase one requires some solid planning unless you want to get comboed harder than an amateur Smash Bros player. When the fight begins, I instantly rush up to the top and use eight bombs to take out the laser, which is severely nerfed on experts for some reason. I then let the remaining two targets share my fire until I have all three parries and a max super, where I take them both out at once. Destroy any bombs immediately, because that blast radius, dough. When taken on the heart, know that the magnet itself can't damage you, but the corkscrew hand that fires all the souls from his previous victims can. Once the heart goes down, the head will fly out like a giant robot about to collide with a nuclear missile. Too soon? Nah. Fly around in a counterclockwise circle with your normal shots to damage the head and avoid the bombs, which end up colliding with each other and taking your eardrum's virginity. This phase lasts 30 seconds or 30 minutes depending on if your shots are connecting, and time can be an issue here, so keep those shots on point. Do you like bullet hell? Do you like electrified walls that block your shots? Do you like obstacles being obstructed by objects in the foreground? Well, you're in luck, because Phase 3 is just that. The inferior madman apparently finds this cow feces funny, because he cackles for the entire rest of the fight, and man is it a long haul. The blue gem fires 5 spiral lanes of tightly packed shots, while the red gem fires 8 spiral lanes of less packed shots. Shrink down to get around the walls and pray that everything is visible when you do. Try to save your max super for right before he unleashes another gem to give you that invincibility boost and focus more on surviving than on hitting him. Fun fact, Dr. Call actually took all the parts from the original Iron Giant to make this monstrosity, so all you're really doing is putting it out of its misery. Number 3, The Phantom Express. Some say this fight is deceptively easy. I said those guys are dirty hackers. This is the one time where parry sugar is the best option because you're going to parry more than you ever thought possible. Phase 1 has you up against a blind ghost that blinded himself by throwing his eyes at you. Jump up and down with roundabout to take most of the eyeballs out and damage him in the process. You'll probably get 5 cards as you jump into the parry ingots, but don't waste your milk blast on the ghost. He's not worth it. The skeleton in Phase 2, however, is not only worth your cards but it's also worth being put into a meat grinder. If I had a penny for every time I used my super only to get immediately hit by his damn head swinging back and forth, I could be on ducktails. For this reason, I'd recommend getting in between his hands and jumping up to use the super, which is infinitely easier than doing it point blank. Keep on him with Spreadshot and he'll retreat back into the hellhole where he belongs. In the next phase, the jack-o'-lanterns are replaced with homing ghosts that drop a parryable skull which can still damage you. Two strange heads emerge from the train, which I can only assume are hooked up to the power system because they breathing down them lightnings. Keep your cart in the center and aim diagonally at one of the heads until you start seeing beams to which you only have to parry the cart once to avoid them. The head you choose to slay will be dead after the first lightning attack. To kill the second one, move your cart back to the center to keep damaging him, then move back to the corner when he attacks again. The ghosts make this part frantic, but Spreadshot takes care of those bad boys. Like I said, Perry Sugar takes a load off your mind, so all you have to focus on is aiming. The final phase is a lot to take in, but Roundabout makes it manageable. After you crack that engine open, always be aiming up and there will be two chances for your shots to hit the heart because they're going to arc back down. The flaming bone ring can be easy to forget about in the storm of engine embers, so you know, don't fall asleep or pass out on us. Keep the cart in the middle to make it easier to aim. Maybe if the train actually stayed on the track, it would put up more of a fight. Phantom Express makes it so high up because I had to change my strategy a lot. This fight takes a lot of practice, so even if it's easier now, the struggle was real. Number 2.5, The Tutorial. Number 2, Wally Warbles. This one even surprised me. During my S rank journey, I always thought of Wally as a boss to do some easy practice on before taking on a harder one. Little did I know there was only one boss harder. As with most aerial fights, the coffee charm is the way to go. You can only damage Wally's head in the first half, so don't go trying to make some holes in his low income housing. His eggs now fire 5 shells instead of 3, almost taking away the only gimmick in the fight. However, if you stay right in front of the far left side, you can basically replicate the same effect with just a little more effort. I'm not sure how many children were dumped on Wally's doorstep by his allegedly many ex-girlfriends, but he seems to favor the yellow ones as the pink birds are forced to be last in line. That's racist. Wally will also fire abnormally large bullets from his head hand that are no problem to dodge. Once you get him mad enough, he'll start yelling something that Google Translate told me means get off my lawn. He'll also spew hundreds of feathers in every direction that aren't terrible as long as you don't try anything stupid. Stay right in front of Wally and only parry the birds that are easily accessible. You should also be using your supers as soon as you can, so this plays an important role in part 3. After you pluck the rest of his feathers off with bullets, his favorite song reveals himself to be the 1930s Mojo Jojo. He now has 6 orbiting eggs instead of 5, and yet they are twice as infuriating. First, enter the ring when the eggs expand and light him up. Retreat when the eggs move back in and parry his laser shot. 
You may have 5 cards at this point, but don't use your super just yet. Move back into the ring and be prepared for him to shoot at you when you're inside. A point blank parry is daunting, but with practice it can be done. Now use your super and use the invincibility boost to escape the ring. Once you enter the ring for the third time, our minute mastermind will start crying before the eggs can come back to ruin your day. Speaking of days ruined, Wally now lies naked on a stretcher flown by two ER birds that apparently keep Wally's medication inside their bodies. I'm not sure about the side effects of that one. Bombs are the obvious weapon of choice when your target is below you. Constant movement helps me a lot here as it's wicked easy to get cornered, especially when Wally starts up chucking Teen Titans Go episodes, I mean garbage at you. When his heart flies out of his mouth, switch back to bullets and be mindful of any pills flying your way as you navigate through the two shrapnel shots. Nuke that bird for 30 seconds and you've got yourself Thanksgiving dinner. Finally, number 34, I mean rule 1, I mean number 1, Kala Maria. Trying to S-rank Kala Maria is like branding yourself under your fingernails. It's unpleasant, you question why you're doing it, and the only thing you gain is visual pleasure. Even with the update giving you more parry opportunities, this fight walks a fine line between sheer difficulty and unfairness. Phase 1 has Kala throwing out 3 of 9 attack combinations. Ghost Pirates, Electric Eels, or Red Bullet Shooting Fish make up one attack, while she also summons either Puffer Fish, a Water Spouting Sea horse or a slightly less literal mind turtle. Certain combinations are almost guaranteed to screw you over, such as pufferfish and eels, so you know, get lucky. While all this chaos happens around you, keep your plane on about the same height as her head, as that's the only thing that takes any damage. As fun as it would seem, lighting up her bountiful bosom isn't going to do you any good. After three or four attacks, she'll get a nice bite from some other electric eels that turn this mystical mermaid into Medusa. Her stone gaze is dodgeable by flying to the upper right hand corner, but it'll only help you before the eels come out of the ocean, as you'll need time to react to any bullets that fly your way. If Kala doesn't think you're treating her like an object, she won't petrify you during a firestorm. Try to save a max suit to clear the eels when it hits our lovely lassie. Again, only the head takes damage. And once that head comes free from her body, you enter a coral reef that apparently belongs out of the water. The head will release bubbled skulls that flutter up and down and unleash a petrifying wave that cannot be dodged. You need to plan ahead when that wave is coming at you, because I can't tell you how many times I've been turned to stone and immediately made contact with a spiked wall. See the walls before they are in your face and never be right in front of them. Same goes for the skulls. Try to time your max super to make contact right before you get hit with a wave because your invincibility boost also negates the effects of that wave. This fight takes number one because luck is way too prevalent for my taste, especially when the challenge that should be there is off the charts. When I S ranked Kala Maria, I got all my parries in phase two and narrowly slipped between the spiked wall and corals during phase three. It didn't take me as long as Wally Warbles because I got lucky. If you've S-ranked Kala Maria, you also got lucky one way or another. It's one thing to use luck as a core game mechanic, it works well in Baroness' fight. It's another thing to have luck be the deciding factor at a point that takes some serious effort to get to. Kala Maria takes the top spot for this reason alone. At least that's my justification. Tell me which bosses you liked, hated, found hard, easy, etc. I really changed up my style for this one, so honest feedback is welcome and desired, so long as you're not a butt nugget. Anyways, I'm Obsidian Madman. We got Obsidian, we got a Madman. Peace out, folks. I look forward to your return.